drop templates on the fly and so on, bunch of things. Basically, it's a full-blown server management suite. Um, now, one problem that we have, uh, okay, just go for 10 seconds. So I've already introduced Ansible. Uh, one problem with any server management system is an inventory. Right? How do you know that how many servers you have or how many uh, servers Ansible will manage and on which server Ansible will do what? Right? There will be cases where uh, let's say you have four web servers, uh, two database servers, maybe maybe a couple of middleware servers and all of them need to be configured differently. Some, some servers need to be memory optimized, some servers need to be uh, CPU optimized and so on and so forth. So, so the configurations actually vary a lot, right? For certain servers, some users might have access to it, some other users might not have access to it. So you have to configure them like that. Um, and to understand which server does what, basically uh, you create a static inventory. Static inventory is basically the first step that any Ansible user would take uh, or in fact any uh, configuration management system user would take. So a static inventory is basically a text file wherein you write the addresses of all your, uh, all the server addresses, your uh, service addresses and so on. Uh, for Ansible it's a static text file in PHP ini style. Do you know what PHP ini style is? like square brackets, then do a heading and, it, and below that you write a few lines and then another square bracket with heading so on. So that's PHP in style. Um, now this static inventory can consist of host addresses. Um, address can be an IP or a resolvable domain name, anything. Uh, optional variables, optional variables for example, um, in certain cases you can say that turn off XYZ user or in certain cases you can uh, you can apply a variable say data center equal to India, data center equal to Europe, so on. And then lastly you can do host grouping. What is host grouping? Basically all four web servers need to come under one heading. Right? All two database servers need to come under one heading. So basically you are host grouping your hosts so that you can manage them better. So that is host grouping. Um, now, one distinct characteristic of distinct characteristic of static inventory is that it has to be managed manually. Right? So let's say you onboarded a new server, you have to add a line under appropriate host group, appropriate heading and so on. Now, when we were in a data center kind of environment where Onboarding a server itself is not a matter of minutes. It can take weeks, and if your configuration is little too eccentric, it can take months. Uh, so, in those cases where you have to make a couple of entries a week, a couple of entries a month, it's okay. I mean, you will not, you will find it inconvenient, but you will not care about it a lot. But now, imagine today's infrastructures where you are on AWS and GCP. Uh, digital ocean and so on and getting an instance is actually a matter of a minute or two. Right? In those cases what will happen is that you will end up booting a lot of instances because the cost of instance is now dropped. There is no procurement team you have to go through. It's really cheap. I mean if you are on digital ocean you get an instance for five dollars which is which is really cheap. Your restaurant bill is more than that. So people end up building a lot of servers and at a lot of uh, and at a rate which is a lot more. So because we have now a huge number of addresses to manage, it goes the static inventory often goes out of sync, right? Because you just booted ten more servers, but you forgot to add those IPs because now the process is so frequent that a mistake is inevitable at some point. Right, so I'm just gonna show you uh, a sample of a dynamic of, of a static inventory.
this is a very basic rudimentary uh, static inventory and as you can imagine that as we go on uh, adding new services this can easily go out of sync. So what is the next best thing that we can do? Basically the plan is to generate this inventory dynamically on the runtime. So when you actually call Ansible to execute something, let's say you want to install uh, Nginx on your servers, on a particular set of servers. Now, as but you don't know the IP addresses beforehand, maybe you miss something or maybe you just don't know. You don't have a static inventory prepared. So in those cases, you can use dynamic inventory which will actually build this inventory on the fly in memory. It's not written in a file. Simply so built in memory so that the chances of going out of sync is eliminated. So, Ansible, as you know, is an open source project. It actually comes feature back with a lot of inventory options uh, EC2, GCP, DistroOcean, uh, Azure, a bunch of them are supported out of the box. You just need to basically download a script and put it in appropriate place while calling the answer. And good part about the answer dynamic inventory is that answer doesn't put any restrictions on how you can build a dynamic inventory. So basically what you can do is you can say that hey my favorite programming language is Python, my favorite programming language is Ruby, I like C, I like Go. You can write your dynamic inventory as per your own convenience. Uh, and we'll just do that, but you can you can write the dynamic inventory as per your convenience in any programming language. Only restriction that we have is that each dynamic inventory basically should return a valid JSON inventory when you are when you going to execute it with this particular plan. So my inventory dash dash list should actually emit a valid JSON inventory, and then Ansible will take care of it. So just as an example, uh, I, I'll show you how default inventory works. So this is what Ansible actually provides out of the box here. I have not done any changes here. And remember this basically is going to parse the entire uh, all of my ECQ work out. So it's going to take a couple of seconds, maybe more than a couple of seconds. But the output that you will see here is, is going to be big. Because it's, so it's going to consist of all of my... How many of you are aware of ECQ by the way? How many of you are not aware of ECQ? Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. I should have explained. Uh, Amazon ECQ is basically... Uh, Amazon Web Service is a cloud provider. EC2 is a service within that cloud provider using which you can boot virtual machines at very short notice. So it will take you a minute to boot a virtual machine. Or maybe a hundred virtual machines, a thousand of virtual machines. Uh, so yeah, so basically I have over, I have a hundred virtual machines in this account. So it's gonna go through each of those machines. It's gonna pull out all the tags. So in EC2 you can tag your machines. Okay? So it's going to pull out all the tags, it's going to pull IP addresses, regions, subnet zones, so on and it's going to build a big uh, inventory file for me, which I can use to call, uh, yeah, so, so I have like a bunch of machines running here in different PPCs. So this is an example, uh, but this is just an inventory example, what do we do with this inventory? So now I'm going to show you how we can actually execute a command using this dynamic inventory on just one server. If you notice there were a bunch of IPs, right? But I don't want to execute something on all those IPs. So, Right, so I am going to execute this command wherein I will get the date of the remote server uh, on, so basically I am calling Ansible using 
ec2.py this is the inventory file which ansible provides by default uh, and i'm going to use this particular group within the list of ips that i got so any server that has tag with key name and value elastic search will be i'll be logging in as another user and using shell module to run date command all right sounds good yep How does EC2.py is contacting uh, with the AWS? Right. So how does EC2.py is contacting AWS? All right. Um, we we are going to write a dynamic entry after this, so you will get more idea on that. But short answer to that is using APIs. AWS provides APIs. These guys are using a library which contacts the API. All right. Okay, so internet is a little slow here. Again, we'll take a couple of seconds to, maybe 10 seconds to get the output for this. In the meantime, do you guys have any questions? Yeah. No, so the inventory will always reside on your laptop, which is executing the Ansible command. So not on the remote machine, on the local machine. So, okay, the question is that where will the inventory created and how does, which piece of code lies where most, right? Uh, so basically what happens is that once I execute this, uh, we will check the internet first. Okay, so when I execute this, what's going to happen is uh, this ec2.py it's running on my machine. It will be executed on my machine here. This guy will contact AWS APIs. It, it has a credential in, uh, written down. It will use those credentials, contact AWS API, get the details of get the details of all the machines that I have. All the machines that I have. And then it will figure out which machine has this particular group, which machine are part of this particular group. This all is happening on my local machine, on my laptop, right? Okay? Once this bit happened, now Ansible is going to write, create a Python code on the fly. And that Python code will be uploaded to the remote machine. Where that Python code is responsible to actually execute the date command. Alright? Is this process clear? Usually, Ansible, see when I run some Ansible, so it will take by default, if I fit in a static, that a static in metric, it will take it after that only it is all, so all things are uh, executing. For example, so I have a different, uh, what is it, calls or something. The first of all, what I'm doing is I'm uh, writing static values and I'm writing some more things in that. Uh, so basically the question is that if you did something on uh, using static inventory during first execution, will it affect the upcoming execution? Is that the question? Uh, no. Between runs, variables are not persisted in answer. But changes do persist because they are being made on the remote end, right? So if you installed a package called Nginx during the first run, it will still be there when you execute again, right? But if you said uh, if you were using a variable called my package in your in your uh, provided by your inventory or provided by someone else, uh, it might not be available on the second run depending upon how you are running. Okay. Uh, all right. So basically, this machine, the time on on the remote machine is this one. Yes. Uh, no, it's not necessary. I, if your username, so my, I'm using DS, DCN user right now. If this would have been on the third, then it would have picked it up. Or if I can configure it in the in the configuration file, in one of the Ansible configuration file, or in SSH configuration file. I have not configured anything, uh, and this is just a demo user. That's why you have, I have to pass minus you all. But you can set it as a default in the configuration file. 
you don't need to pass it. This one is based on tagging, but there are tons of groups available. You can base it on tags, you can base it on uh, data center, you can base it on pretty much anything. There are uh, CIDR, subnets, VPCs, so on. I have already configured that. SSH keys. Okay, what if I have another? Yeah, that's okay. As long as you are authorized to SSH using SSH key or whatever method you use. Uh, so basically, uh, static will pass as SSH key. No, no. SSH key is actually picked up from your SSH agent. Okay. You can specify in, in the inventory, but it's not mandatory. So which has having multiple SSH uh, keys. You have to run it separately, sorry. Or you have to run, or you have to add all the keys to your SSH agent. Alright, um, okay, so moving forward. So we have, what I have shown you is the default script that Ansible provides. I have not done any changes in that. That's something you can download off the internet right now. Let's start working. Uh, but I actually want to dig a bit deeper. So I have written a small inventory script, very small inventory script. This is easier to do because that one is pretty big. And it does a lot. So I have written a small inventory script that I want to share with you, uh, which you can use as sort of a learning point on how you can build your own scripts. Uh, this is Simpler than what AWS does, uh, what Ansible does by default. So this inventory basically goes through all the instances, but it only look for the instances that have a tag called Ansible inventory. It will ignore all the other instances. So using this, you can actually selectively say that okay, only ten sets of machines I have to manage by Ansible. I don't want Ansible to touch all those machines, which is something that I do not recommend. I mean, I think all your servers should be. Uh, managed by some sort of uh, some sort of tool uh, and not manual, but this is what a basic inventory script would do. Right? Uh, I'm using Boto 3. I am a Python coder, so I only use Python. But rest assured, you can write it in any language that you want. Uh, basically, using a bunch of libraries, Boto, JSON, perfect parser, and so on. Um, a small function to get IPs. So basically, you pass a JSON of instance, it will figure out and return public IP address if it is available. If public IP address is not available, it's going to return a private IP address. Um, and this bit, these four lines, basically look for a file called ec2.ini just to get the credentials for the API. Alright. Uh, let's go a little bit down. So that's it. It's, the entire logic is basically this this tiny bit of 10 line of code, that's all. Uh, so what this guy is doing is that creating a Boto client, Boto is by the way AWS library, in case you guys don't know. Uh, it's gonna connect to EC2 with that access key and secret and all, which it got from this particular bit. Uh, and then it's gonna ask for all the instances, that's describe instances, all right? And in describing instances, we are basically going to get a reservation from that. I'm going to extract instances. From that, I'm going to extract the addresses. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to check for a tag called Ansible role. If the Ansible role is present, it's going to take the tag's value and then put it in the inventory. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, it's hyphen hyphen yes. So basically this is actually slightly dumber than you think. It actually returns only one thing for everything. Alright, uh, so just to give you an example. Uh, so I'm going to run this on the same
basically out of my hundred instances, I've not actually tagged Ansible role to all of them. I've just used two instances and tagged Ansible role. Okay. So this is the same guy, the Elasticsearch guy. If you look at that, it is 7768, 7768. So using this inventory again, you can execute the same command. the inventory file and the grouping because now the grouping is not based on the tags. Grouping is not based on the on these groups that I created, Jago, Elasticsearch, using Ansible underscore group. This should also take, take less time than that one because that one is much more comprehensive. Yeah. Alright, so so this is how you can use it. Uh, the entire playlist is available on GitHub. If you guys want to check out, if you guys want to play it, play with it. Feel free to uh, modify it and do whatever you want to do. Uh, that's all I have. Yeah. How do you implement this with local data centers? That's a very interesting question. Uh, answer to that is basically use a combination of any database like SQLite and write a small Boto script. Or, I mean, write a small uh, Flask or Sinatra or that. Uh, do you know Flask or Sinatra? Micro, micro frameworks, right? Uh, so use that uh, backed by a SQLite. If you have small numbers, you have like large inventory, then use MySQL or Postgres. And basically, uh, your inventory script will now be call to your Sinatra or Flask that will essentially read everything from the device. So build your own API, that's what I was. And it's, it's not the part. We, we did that uh, a couple of years back for the cloud. It's, it's actually pretty straightforward. Yes. Can we not do the same thing with uh, remote facts or Java facts? First we need to write a Python script. Okay, remote facts. I, as far as I know, fact collection will happen automatically because those two, these two processes generating inventory and getting facts are not the same processes. Uh, that being said, using this one, uh, the one that I do, you will lose on a lot of facts that are coming from the AWS. You will still have the host facts. So then facts come from different levels. If you use Amazon, if you use the Ansible's default uh, inventory, you will get a lot more information because it's actually getting a lot of more things. Which I'm not so what I mean to say is, uh, with the remote tags or gather tags, you still get the uh, uh, inventory file of whatever tag name you want. So uh, with that, then you can apply it your other roles or playbooks based on that database. I am sure that I will get most facts, but I don't think that will have the tags. No, you will. Uh, the reservations. If you gather, if you are uh, getting the reservations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what, was, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, the host facts that I have talked about are the facts which are operating from inside the instance, like which operating system is, is it, which kernel version it's in. I'm talking about those facts. I think you're talking about the AWS facts. Yeah, e this guy, the one that I wrote, will not get it. But the one that AWS has will get a bunch of AWS facts. Yes. That's it. It's good. You don't need to do anything. So, Remember when you write a playbook, you write uh, hosts, my host, host, database. It's basically that group only. Yeah, yeah, that's all. There is no, you don't need to do anything. It's just, you just write. So what is the key requisite for creating the dynamic inventory? So what is the key requisite for creating the dynamic inventory? Dash dash lists to that's all. No, no. So basically, so, I mean, tags should exist. That. that depends on what kind of inventory you are using. If you are using the, uh, the one that is provided by AWS, uh, provided by Ansible, uh, you don't actually need to have a single tag also. It is still work. Because tag is just not how I am using it, but it's flexible enough. It will provide you a lot of different options. You can, you can uh, use it on the basis of, let's say, subnets. You can use it on the basis of your availability, availability zone, your region, uh, VPC IDs. 
operating systems, operating system versions, it's huge. Tags is how I'm using it. But it's so big that I actually can't possibly demo everything because it's, it's crazy. You realize the amount of time it took to actually do it. The one that Ansible has, it's very complex. So tags also be created to Ansible. So the, uh, the tags that we create to Ansible is for uh, so the... Uh, what tags are like, uh, there? Ansible world has a different tag. So you have uh, Ansible, uh, like uh, Elastic and then Django. That, that tag was created on EC2 only. That was not created on Ansible. So no, created by Ansible is good? As long as it is created by anyone, but it has to be created on EC2. Yeah, that's right. If it is created on EC2 by Ansible or by hand, by a puppet master chef, whatever. Any other question? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll take only two questions, short ones. Sorry. And then you can catch me outside. Yes. How Ansible communicates to inventory? Uh, are you talking about how Ansible connects to the remote host? So if, if it's a static inventory, then it's parser. It's a normal text parser. Uh, if it is dynamic inventory, then it is actually a JSON. So basically, even the text one, it's in memory, it's, it's converted into a JSON. Uh, and then dynamic is, is anyway giving you JSON, right? So JSON output is basically parsed inside Ansible in memory. And then uh, certain sections like uh, like the host address or if there are any variables, you know, those are used accordingly. There can be connection variables like what SSH user to use, what set of keys to use, so on. Yes, last one, yes. Yes. Yes.